Welcome to our YouTube channel. We are the Alliance of Health Industry Students and don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And please enjoy. the electrochemical detection of nicotine at a carbon nanofiber polydendrima modified glass carbon electrode. We know that electrochemical sensor is a device that is used to analyze the properties of an analyte by means of redox reactions to convert into information that can be used to quantify something that can be analyzed qualitatively. Nicotine is the primary mind-altering substance in tobacco. It acts as a stimulating agent that accelerates the rate at which hormones reach the body. It is a highly addictive substance. Even though it is a well-known fact that tobacco contains a lot of chemicals that are detrimental to our health, 22.3% of the population still smoke cigarettes. This has caused a rise in concern about the use of the substance, which is why we conducted our experiment. In our experiment, we chose to use a glossy carbon electrode amongst others because it is chemically stable, it is non-volatile, it is affordable and a good electrical conductor. We also used an electrode because it has both cathodic and anodic reactions on it. In our cell, we used a platinum wire, which is an auxiliary electrode that allows the passage of electrodes. We have a reference electrode that contains silver chloride. It has a fixed potential and good for quantitative analysis. We use nanomaterial because they have a large surface area and are good electrical conductors. A dendroma, which is a polymer, fourth class normal dendroma, large surface area, is stable and is porous. We use a potential stat to obtain an infrared spectrum of absorption or emission of a solid, liquid or gas. These are three different techniques of electrochemical characterization. The first one we have cyclic voltammetry, which is the first analysis tool to check out the sensor and to see if reduction and oxidation can occur in our sensor. Applying a potential waveform to an electrochemical cell and measuring the resulting current. The second one we have electrochemical impedance which has to do with resistance and it is related to conductivity. High resistance means we are dealing with an insulator. Meanwhile, low resistance means we are dealing with a high conductive material. The larger the semicycle, the larger the resistance. The lower the semicycle, the higher the conductivity. The third technique is the differential pulse voltammetry, which is a technique that involves applying amplitude potential pulses on a linear ramp potential. In DPV, a base potential value is chosen at which there is no Faraday reaction and is applied to the electrode. The base potential is increased between pulses with equal increments. The last one is a square wave voltammetry. Square wave voltammetry is a potential static method that offers some advantage to common techniques like the first one I mentioned, cyclic voltammetry, in that the, the waveform is a series of pulses increasing along a linear baseline where current is measured in a forward pass and reverse pass. Square wave voltammetry is used as a detection of species in redox reaction that occurs in the electrochemical cell. I will take you through the process of how we detected nicotine using our electrochemical sensor. We use cigarette as our sample and we weighed our sample accurately in the weighing balance using the analytical balance. 
we removed the filter printer and we left our leaves to dry for 24 hours in an oven. We dissolved the dry leaves using the ionized water. We soon carried the leaves to dissolve. And after that, we filtered the leaves and used the filtrate. We placed one mil to two mil of the liquid into the supporting electrolyte. We diluted the solution using lead sulfide and we used our electrochemical sensor to detect the concentration of nicotine. We repeated this process three times with our three, with our three replicates so that our results are more accurate and precise. Results and discussion. Now we'll be looking at the IR and the Raman spectroscopy. The performance of pristine and acid-treated CNF was assessed as shown in the figure on our right-hand side. This figure indicates or represents the IR spectroscopy. Please note that the red spectra indicates the oxidized CNF and the black spectra indicates the pristine, or rather the bare CNFs. The observations of oxidized CNFs and pristine CNFs were almost the same but had a slight change. The oxidized CNF spectra showed a greater or rather a sharper peak at 1434 for carboxylic acids. Now looking at the Raman spectroscopy, we can see that there is also a slight change at peak D and also at peak G. The increase in peak is due to the formation of more oxygen functional groups and when there are more oxygen functional groups that are being formed, there are more sp3 and sp2 bonds that are being created. These are the two methods that were used for the acid treatment of CNFs. Number one, we have the field emission scanning electron microscopy, which is our FESEM. And number two, we have the transmission electron microscopy, which is our TEM. In the findings, it is shown that the type of method used for the acid treatment of CNS can influence the changes that may, may be observed. In this case, the pristine or the bare CNF has fibers with smooth surfaces when using FESEM. The surfaces changes to be rougher. When TEM is used, the CNF maintains its structure and the dispensity is improved regardless of the refluxing, the refluxing of CNF with HNO3. Now looking at the electrochemical characterization, using CV of bare modified electrodes and scan rate study, the electrode deposition of the dendrima on the electrode is observed at 0.94 V. The layer of CNF before electrode deposition results in an extra peak that will be observed at 0.45 V and it increases the electrode deposition current. When the CNF and the PAMAM link, new peaks are being formed or are being observed. The nicotine is detected when the pH is between 6 and 8. PAMAM GCE produces high charge resistance with results in good electrical conductivity of CNF and a large surface area of PAMAM GCE and the CNF PAMAM GCE. Voltammetric response of sensor towards different concentration of nicotine. The DPV is used to determine the voltammetric response of increased concentration of nicotine. The study conducted proved that when the concentration of nicotine is increased, the current also increases. This is the reason why we have the straight line graph. This indicates that the concentration of nicotine is directly proportional to the current. The line equation of y is equal to 29.42x plus 17.38 was calculated for current versus concentration with r squared being equal to 0 0.999. Nicotine was calculated to be 0 0.0263 micrometer.
In conclusion to what has been said, electrochemical sensors are an exciting and rapidly evolving technology with many potential applications in areas such as environmental monitoring, food safety, medical diagnostics, and more. With their high sensitivity, fast response times, and low cost, these sensors have the potential to revolutionize many industries. While there are still some challenges to be addressed, such as selectivity and stability, the future of electrochemical sensors looks promising. As research and development continue, it is likely that these sensors will become even more powerful and reliable, opening new opportunities for their use in a wide range of applications. Below are references and acknowledgements for this presentation.